welcome to the Diablo Podcast. I am your host, Flux, and we are online at DiabloInkGamers.com. This is a special episode of the podcast. It's entirely consisting of an interview I conducted at BlizzCon 2013 last weekend. I was speaking with uh, two Diablo 3 developers, the lead programmer Jason Regier and game designer Travis Day. In this interview, we talked about uh, clan support and trading tools, legendary items and binding, the diminishment of magic find and reaper of souls, class balance, hard caps on affixes, and the giant new stat values, and uh, lots more stuff. The interview runs about 16 minutes, and it's very dense. I was surprised how much we covered in it, and the transcript is well over 3,000 words, which is a lot more than I would have thought for a 16-minute interview. You can read the whole transcript in the news post on DiabloInkGamers.com, and there's a link to it in the video details if you're watching this on YouTube. And enjoy the show, and um, check back in a day or two. I recorded a big post-BlizzCon podcast with fellow attendees and regular show guests the Nine Ball and Wolfpack, and talked all about everything at the show, and we all played the Reaper of Souls demo about a thousand hours combined, so it's mostly about the gameplay and stuff, and um, other cool things at the show, developer encounters and such. And that should be posted later this week. So enjoy this for now and check out the transcript if you want more details. I did a big write up of lots of stuff, added details, things I wanted to ask, other questions I didn't have time for, etc. I, I could have easily done a, an hour long interview with these guys, but we only had 20 minutes. We got a little bit late to start, so 16 it was. And uh, enjoy the show. Moo. Yeah, lots of questions. Well, I obviously can't ask all of them because I have lots of words, but <laughs> one of the things, just right off the bat, a bunch of people, I had people suggest questions, and there were many people that said, I want more information about the social features, the guilds. You guys put out the video, the ROS preview. It has this picture of the, of the clan interface, which looks very much out of D2 with the characters at the bottom animated, and that's not been mentioned at all on any of the panels. So I wonder if you could say kind of what you're looking to do with the social? Are you just in better ways to chat? Is there trading involved in that? Um, well, we, we're we still working on the full feature set for what those actually may encompass. Right now, I mean, like, clans and groups, uh, groups really came over from StarCraft, too. Mm -hmm. Like, they are, there's something that people know and love there, where you, if you have social interests, you may want to get into a, a group with a lot of other people that share that same interest. Clans, uh, you know, clans are are something that have sort of existed in various games for, for now. And they definitely offer you a new way to chat with people, a new way to get together and to get and play games. So. so is it, I mean, the chat interface for the whole Battle.net is not being changed that much for D3. It's really just a special, if you're in a clan, you get more social features with people in the, also in your clan? Well, I, I think it's not so much, you, you definitely can easily chat with people who are inside your clan, but it's it's not, it's not it's more about promoting awareness that other people in your clan are online, that they're available to play games, yeah. that they're there to be able to get into something that, like adventure mode, which is an easy hop-in, hop-out kind of experience for those guys. Have you looked into, is there item trading associated with that, or...? Well, I think item trading isn't restricted just to clans at yeah. all. I mean, so I think it's something that you can do anywhere. But I think, obviously, like, if you wanted to talk to other people in your game and say, like, hey, would you like to trade these items? Like, let's go and do it. I mean, I think item trading as, as a whole, like, items and the way that they're soulbound is sort of changing a lot with Reaper of Souls. I mean, a very big focus for us is to make sure that that items mean something for you. Like, we've upped a lot of the power. We've made a lot of these items really interesting and unique. Um, so, I, actually, Travis could probably speak more to that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Can. Not to do on the spot or anything. But... Yeah, no, no. Well, oh, it's a no, segue. He, he, he spent so much time working on items. So, <laughs> so just uh, briefly before you go on, um, binding, it looks like now it looks like all legendaries you find are, are out count bound. Yes. And then are. anything you put a you put a gem in a socket also becomes a count bound. Um, in the case of socketing, it's more that um, anytime you socket a soul bound gem into a item, it'll bind it. Currently um, in the demo, you anything you put it in, it says, oh, so you take it out, then you can trade it. Yeah. It's just while it's socketed, you can't. In the case of rare items. In the case of legendaries, uh, we really are trying to double down on making items feel really rewarding. Yeah. We're trying to make them as powerful as we possibly can. We say all the time we want them to be game-changing, but not game-breaking. Um, and a lot of the constraints of that are that we want you to feel powerful, but we want you to also feel like you earned it. Like, you, if you see someone with a really awesome item, we don't want you to think, oh, well, he just went to the auction house and bought it. So um, all of our trading restrictions that we're putting in place are to sort of help you feel really good about earning your items and also to give us the ability to make them as crazy as we possibly can. Um, when we uh, remove the auction house, we're mostly trying to focus on 
making the game experience the best it can be without needing one. And we're also trying to find as many ways as possible to allow trading to still exist uh, while protecting the integrity of the gameplay. So there are things we have uh, in place right now where anytime you're in a co-op game with someone, if an item drops, you can freely trade it to anyone that was in the co-op game. Because what we really want is for it to be about playing with your friends instead of just sort of like hopping in and going, here's my stuff and then leaving. So that would be items that would be bound once you leave the game, but you actually can trade them in the game? Um, you can trade any item, including the legendaries and set items, within the game that you find them. Okay. And even when you leave it, we basically give you a time window that says, hey, everyone that you were just playing with, when this item dropped, you can trade that item too. Well, that's an incentive to multiplayer. There, exactly. Yeah. And to not having assholes for friends also. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll get you playing with people like, oh, you're a wizard. Oh, man, I just found this cool wizard item. Here you go. And yeah. then you can get all his barb stuff, so it works out for everyone. So related topic, I mean, currently gold is sort of a commodity that you use in the auction house. Mm -hmm. Obviously there are some gold sinks, and you guys have mentioned the Mystics Enchant is going to be a big... Mm -hmm. Are there no, just I'm briefly on that, are there no limits to, like your demonic essences now limit your crafting? Is there, If you have a billion gold, can you just roll it on the Mystic Enchants just indefinitely? Or is there something they have to find, a commodity or a material or something? Um, it... There are some throttles, mostly um, if you want to enchant legendaries, for example, if you want to like re-roll the best things in the game, you also need the disenchanting material from legendaries. So yeah. there's definitely some gate to the amount of times you can re-roll an item, um, and there's an increasing gold cost the more you repeatedly enchant the same mm -hmm. thing. So you don't need a ton of money, but if you have a ton of money, you can do something with it. Um, we really want to give players, ideally, things to do with their gold, that they're happy about. We don't want to like try to tax people. We want to like find things in the game that feel like they're valuable. Like That's trans good. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I, I think transmog is a perfect extension of that. I mean, it's a gold sink for us, but it's something that players wanted anyway. I mean, they didn't want yeah. to be forced to to have the look of the item, you know, that be, just because the stats were better on that. Yeah, I like the clown suit you put together for the panel photo there. It was that the was yellow pants and the pink top. And you don't have to try too hard. It was like to get Diablo 2 just came back to life right there. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Diablo 2 was only only black and dark. I forgot. <laughs> um, class balance. Obviously, currently the barbarian is just maybe a little more popular and a little better mm -hmm. for certain builds. And of course, that's being all. It's like it's being wildly changed from the data mining we've seen so far. But are you? Is the goal to make? I mean, obviously you can't make all six classes be, you know, 16.66% played. Mm -hmm. But are you trying to get them more in line, or is it okay if some if everyone really loves the Demon Hunter after the changes are made or something? Um, class balance is absolutely something we're spending a lot of time working on in group of souls. Uh, we really want, for example, I think I even alluded to, like, everyone plays a whirlwind barbarian yeah. during our panel. Um, we really want people to play what they enjoy. We want you, if you want to be a demon hunter, we want you to feel good about being a demon hunter. And we want all the demon hunters to have as many ways to play that character as possible, so you can really find what suits you best. Um, that's something that we're working on with both the skills. We're just going through and revising a lot of the old skills, we're doing really big numbers passes on things to just balance everything out a lot better. Um, we're also trying to play that up with the items. We're adding lots of affixes that reinforce certain skills so that you can find the one, the items that suit your playstyle, uh, and also especially the legendaries. We're trying to make those really embody or open up playstyles that players hadn't previously had access to. Like there's some legendary items, like uh, for the wizard class, right? There's the Hydra skill. Mm -hmm. So maybe you didn't really like Hydra, but if you got a legendary item that gives you two Hydras, right? Then maybe that skill becomes really really appealing to you, so you, you go and choose that instead. So all of the legendary items, and a lot of the items in the game, we're really just trying to make it so that there's a lot of diversity amongst classes. And I think when, when we play the game at the office, like we, we sort of have our own groups at the office that come out and say like, oh, this build's the best, this is totally OP, right? You know, and then it'll change after week after week. I mean, we see that in sort of a live environment too. What one group says is the best, then changes over time. And I think that sort of is a testament to the depth of the game. And I think that the legendary items and all of the new itemization with Lead 2.0 is really going to play into that and give the game even more depth. Yeah, you can't balance everything flat, but obviously there's always people. But, you know, it'd be nice if there were more options. And obviously you guys have been buffing a lot of skills and patches in the live games, so... Um, a couple of things on stats and uh, items. Are you still thinking about affix hard caps for crit and crit damage and stuff? That seems like it's going in and out in the various versions of data mining. That is, uh, it's something we were experimenting with uh, early on in the development cycle. Um, as of the most recent discussions, we took that out a while ago, I think. Um, we sort of toyed around with the notion of like, 
well, what happens when you hit 100% crit? Can you go over? Do we care? Um, we sort of came to the conclusion that really, the Diablo's game, like, we want to give the player as much control over their character yeah. as possible, right? It's not an MMO. We don't have to balance things around some, like, really tight bar. And if you want to stack certain stats, go for it. Ideally, you want to have lots of different stats because they're all yeah. really compelling. And we're trying to come at it more from that angle. And we've added a lot of new affixes recently to sort of reinforce that. We added uh, resource cost reduction as a percent, so you can stack that on your gear. We have cooldown reduction, as we showed. We have a lot of affixes that make a certain specific skills better. Um, we recently reintroduced Crushing Blow into the game. Cool. So we're trying to just get as many really cool affixes as possible so that it's not really a big deal if you decide you like crit or attack speed. Because yeah. obviously the problem now is that there's a trifecta and everybody just wants those. Because there's no there's no diminishing returns really. Right. And there's no breakpoints. So it's always better to have more crit. But if, as you say, if you can get more competing, compelling. I'm sorry, are you going to add something there? Well, yeah, I mean, for, first of all, I, I wouldn't read too much into data mine stuff because... <laughs> That's like, all we, we have, though. Well, I, well, I understand. It's a whole little world. <laughs> but, yeah, but it's like reading tea leaves, right? We change stuff so so often at the office. Like, we just want to try out a whole bunch of new things, and, and that's really the iterative nature of, you know, of life in Blizzard. Um, for, for items themselves, though, I think something that you may notice if you see some of the slides from the panels is that the, for the tooltips is that we've divided up the affixes into primary yeah. and secondary categories, and so, I mean, I think that there were some cases before where you might have gotten uh, an item where you, you suddenly find this affix on it where it has, like, plus to gold or, or health globe pickup, and you thought, yeah. oh, man, that, that came at the expense of something that you really wanted, like crit damage on, you know. But these some of these these affixes are now classified into different groups so that you actually know, like, you're not losing one as a result of another. But that also has the, the side effect, which is that there are some caps on how many primary stats that you can have and how many secondary stats that you can have at the same time. So I think we're changing, we, we understand that the, that trifecta of stats does exist on the current set of items and we're looking to address that so that there are more interesting choices for people and the items that they have. And hard caps would certainly be one way to do that, but you're not you're not looking to go with hard caps in your current thinking. We think Or I, diminishing returns about 50% or something like that? Or? Um, currently not. I've, I've frequently said this whenever we talk about caps, which is if we do have caps, it's a very heavy-handed way for designers to address a problem, um, but it also opens up its own bag of problems, which is now I've got to refer to it as item jenga. Like, yeah. oh, well, I hit the cap on this item, so now I need to replace this item, so I've got to enchant that to get rid of the crit, oh, but then I need to put crit damage on this one, and like every time you find a new item, it becomes a burden. That's kind of fun, though. If I guess it's maybe that's, that's a min-maxer kind of thing. I think it's very fun for a certain mindset of players, and I don't personally mind it, but what we don't like about it is if you look what it does for, say, WoW with, uh, with reforging. Um, anytime you get a new item, you go to a website, you punch in your stats, and it says, here's the things you need to do to your item, and yeah. here's all the stuff you've got to do before you can actually use it. And we really just want players to go, hey, this is a good item, and put it on, and go kill things with it. I mean, it, it might, it, as much as it, it sounds really interesting to have one change force you to have to change all, th you know, a bunch of other items, I mean, that's a pretty big disincentive to trying to change your build around, and I think that changing your build around is something that we really want to want people to feel like they have the option to do, especially with a lot of these new items. We have items that give you pretty compelling stat boosts to certain skills that might make you take a skill that you more normally wouldn't want, right? Just because the stat boost to those, that, that particular skill is so awesome. Like, I, as a wizard, maybe I normally wouldn't use Arcane Orb, but if I see that I have an item that gives me plus 20% damage to Arcane Orb, I might check that thing out. And now there's, no, there's Frozen Orb. Oh, sorry, Frozen Orb is a, is a magic missile effect. Uh, it's an arcane orb effect. And which, yeah. which, which one is the magic missile returning? There's uh, one of the D2 famous skills I'm blanking on. No, it was frozen orb. Was the one it was a frozen orb. Yeah. Yeah. Frozen orb's coming back as a arcane, is an arcane orb. orb yeah. Yeah. Well, we must have it now. <laughs> So one of the speaking of slides and panels, I was just watching that panel earlier, and there's like plus 877, you know, intelligence or something like that. So are we looking to be looking at people with like six and seven thousand intelligence on their total character as opposed to like three thousand today? And is that how you're you're tending? Because currently it seems like the numbers we've seen for crit damage and critical hit chance and stuff on the ROS items is are a lot lower percentages or at least aren't increasing. But suddenly there's like 600 more stats, so it seems like that's that's going to be a way to. You won't want to use your current trifectas because you'll find a new ROS thing that's got 500 stat, 
and it's going to totally outpoint what you're wearing, even if the crit is a little bit lower or something. There's absolutely an ex uh, a degree of that, partially because what we're really trying to do moving into Reaper Souls, and especially with Loop 2.0, is we're trying to shift the paradigm like in a meaningful way. We're going, well, here's what items used to be. Here's where we feel like they really should be. And it, and it takes a meaningful amount of change to get there because we're trying to... Uh, we're trying to reduce the discrepancy both in the top end and the bottom end players, but also we're guaranteeing like every item is going to have four primary stats and two secondary stats, which means you're way more likely to find items with a lot of power. Um, so that's part of how we're encouraging people to um, transition into the new system. One related question. Are gym bonuses going to go up? Because currently, you know, 50 of a stat is nice in a gym, but that's when you've got 100 of that stat on your armor. If you have 800 of that stat on your armor, the gym bonus seems like it's going to be really minuscule. There are absolutely going to be new gym tiers, and that is a 100% accurate statement. No. And as a result, yes, we will we will have really powerful new gems later on. One more question. Uh, let me find a good one. Pick your best. Oh, there's so many. Um, magic find and gold find and paragon points. One of the main things you guys said when you were first adding in the paragon levels is that we don't want magic find to be an essential mod on equipment and we're going to give it to you as a passive bonus. That appears to be completely gone in the paragon points and you can get magic find if you spend points but it's competing against what? Pickup radius and faster run and I think resource regeneration. Mm -hmm. I like all those better than gold find especially sure. at a low level. So our curious gold find going to become more important on gear? Are you switching how it works on gear? Um, we're actually, we've made some changes to the way Magic Find works in the game. Um, one of the biggest things that we did with that is uh, Magic Find will provide, for example, if I have 100% Magic Find, the cap today I think is 400, 300, 300 from it's stats and you can add a, a year and a half working on the expansion. I'm like, what is it actually? I don't even remember. So um, basically Magic Find will provide less and less of a return the higher the quality of the item is. So you actually only get 10% of your magic find applied to legendary items. Yeah. So because it's not as impactful of a stat anymore, we felt like we didn't really need the restrictions we had originally. We didn't feel like we had to just automatically give everyone, like, I have to have magic, magic find because we can't have two people with a five times different reward schedule like on top of your character efficiency and the skills and how familiar you are with the game. So we wanted to really diminish that gap. So as a result, we, uh, we we made some changes to Magic Find, and we took it out of Paragon because it's no longer as mandatory as it used to be. It's more of an option. Now. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. Thanks for your time, guys. Yeah. Thanks.